In this video, we'll learn a technique of integration called integration by parts. Integration by parts is based on the product rule for taking derivatives. Recall that the product rule says that when you take the derivative of a product of two functions, that's equal to the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. If we rearrange this formula by solving for this last term, we get f of x times g prime of x is equal to f of x g of x prime minus f prime of x g of x. Now let's integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x. The integral of a difference is the difference of the integrals, so I can break up this right-hand side into two integrals. Now the integral of the derivative of f times g is just equal to f times g by the fundamental theorem of calculus. And I carry the rest of the formula down. And now I have a formula relating the integral of f times g prime to the integral of f prime times g. This formula allows us to rewrite something that might be tricky to integrate in terms of something that's hopefully easier to integrate. Although I've written this formula using indefinite integrals with no bounds of integration, it would be just as easy to put on bounds of integration. Now the fundamental theorem tells us that the integral of the derivative is the original product of functions evaluated from A to B. There's another version of this formula that might be a little easier to remember. If we let u equal f of x and v equal g of x, then du is equal to f prime of x dx using differential notation, and dv is equal to g prime of x dx. In this notation, we can rewrite the formula as the integral of u times dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du since v is our g of x and du is our f prime of x dx. Again, we can include bounds of integration if we're working with definite integrals. This will be our key formula for this section and integrating using this formula is called integration by parts. Let's use integration by parts to find the integral of x e to the x dx. Our formula for integration by parts says the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So we need to split up our integrand x e to the x dx into a part that we're going to call u and a part that we're going to call dv. One natural way to split it up is to let u equal x and dv equal e to the x dx. But another option might be to make u equal to e to the x and dv equal to x dx. Or we might decide to make u be the whole product x e to the x and leave dv as just dx. Whatever choice we make, we need u times dv to be our entire integrand here, and we need dx to be part of dv in order to use proper differential notation. Let's try using the first choice first. If u is equal to x, then du is equal to dx. And if dv is e to the x dx, then we can find v by integrating this, and the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x. Plugging into our integration by parts formula, we have the integral of u dv, that's x e to the x dx, is equal to u times v, x e to the x, minus the integral of v du, that's e to the x dx. Well, this is looking very promising because I know how to integrate e to the x dx. It's just 
e to the x plus a constant of integration. And so integration by parts has allowed us to compute our integral. Let's check our answer by taking the derivative of what we got. The derivative of x e to the x minus e to the x plus c is going to be the derivative of x, that's 1, times e to the x plus x times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, minus the derivative of e to the x, which is again e to the x, plus the derivative of c, which is just 0. And since this term and this term cancel out, we're left with x e to the x, which is exactly what we started out with as our integrand. So we've checked that our work is correct. Notice that in order to take the derivative of our answer, we ended up having to use the product rule. And that's no coincidence, because the formula for integration by parts is really just the product rule used in reverse. So we were successful in computing this integral using our first choice of u and dv. But before we leave this problem, let's see what would have happened if we'd used a different choice instead if we'd used u equal to e to the x and dv equal to x dx. If we'd done that, then we would have gotten du to be e to the x dx, and we would have computed v by integrating x dx to that get x squared over 2. Plugging this into our formula for integration by parts, we would get the integral of u dv, that's e to the x, times x dx, is equal to u times v, that's e to the x, times x squared over 2, minus the integral of v du, that's x squared over 2, times e to the x dx. Now in order to go any further, we need to be able to compute the integral of x squared over 2 times e to the x dx. Dividing by 2 poses no problem, that's just a constant. But the integral of x squared e to the x, that's more complicated than the integral of e to the x times x that we started with. So we're going the wrong direction here. And this turns out to be a poor choice of u and dv. I'll let you check that the third choice of u and dv that I suggested also ends up making things more complicated instead of simpler. So the first choice turned out to be the best choice for u and dv. Integration by parts works by replacing an integral of the form u dv by the equivalent expression u times v minus the integral of v du that's hopefully easier to compute.